Over the last couple of decades, we have been blessed with many Spider-Man games of all calibers. However, I don't think any have made an impact quite as much as Insomniac Spider-Man, and with their long-awaited Spider-Man 2 only around the corner, I thought it was best to finally add this game to the grind, and to get the platinum for the game for the second time. So without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos, and let's begin. Welcome to the Achievement Grind. The game begins on a crisp New York morning, Peter Parker's being the brilliant yet lazy kid before he gets a warning that Fisk Tower is being raided. He pops some toast, slips into something a little more uncomfortable, and within seconds we are swinging into action ready to take on Fisk. Honestly, and immediately, what a way to start the game, wasting no time in getting us to the best swinging that has ever been in a Spider-Man game. We talk to the police captain Yuri who clues us in when we arrive. Now, as you'd imagine, the scene is pretty chaotic, exploding tankers, armed Fisk crew, well only armed for a moment as we begin our first fight with them and get used to the combat which is as smooth as you'd imagine. When we rid the world safely of these delinquents, more explosions happen and in no time we storm the gate. Inside we get used to more combat as well as encounter many new types of enemies as we fight our way higher and higher. We deal with guns, rockets and fake police on Fisk's payroll but nothing stops us from taking them out and making our way to Fisk's office. Once inside, he plays a real coward move and hides behind glass letting his rather intense office guns take us out instead. It doesn't work as you'd imagine, and we use his own guns against him and free him of his cage. Aren't we nice? Now, Fist doesn't take this as a kind gesture, however, and we begin the first boss fight of the game. Now, admittedly, Fisk packs an incredibly heavy punch, but being webbed up and thrown around, he doesn't really have too much time to actually hit us with any of them. After about five minutes of pummeling the hell out of each other, the fight comes to an end, and we plummet to the bottom floor where Fisk is caught, and even gift-wrapped for the police to finally arrest and stop this criminal. As he is being taken away, he also then screams that he is the only one that is capable of protecting the city, and now that he's gone, things are about to go very wrong for us. <laughs> How bad can things get? But with that rather intense tutorial out of the way, we perch on a pipe and unlock our first trophy, knocking down Kingpin. However, we don't revel on our win for long. We're then introduced to the skills, the suits, and the gadget menus that we will be levelling up over time, and we get back to swinging. Doc Ock then gives us a call saying that we are late and he needs help, so we make it straight to his offices. Once in our civilian clothes, we break into the room and Doc Ock is making some wonderful progress on his prosthetic equipment testing. Well, kind of nice progress. It ends up blowing up, unfortunately, and it couldn't have happened at a worse time, as then Oscorp suits come in to assess his progress and funding approval. Yeah, they're not happy. We then find Captain Yuri again, who says that she needs our help. Oscorp's surveillance beacons around the city have been hacked, and every one of them has been shut down. And since we're pretty decent with tech, we're in charge of getting them back online, as the police don't know a thing that's going on without them. To reconnect them, you just have to do a short minigame to match a frequency, and once active, we can then see the surrounding area, and we'll get notifications on nearby crimes and collectibles, and that sort of thing. Now, before before we carry on with the main story, I wanted to swing around New York to get them back all online ASAP as it is much easier to deal with in my opinion. So we get to work, also aiming for some other miscellaneous trophies along the way. On the path to booting up the city, we're then introduced to small crimes, which take moments to stop, but we need to do them all. We also find our first collectibles, which are these old Spider-Man bags that are webbed to walls, and we also get our next trophy as well. Now in the game, there is the Avengers Tower. Now this ugly building needs climbing, so we sprint to the top perch on a light and unlock the next next trophy, Hero for Hire. And the next couple of trophies also came quite soon as well. The next was for collecting 5 of the 50 odd backpacks, once done we unlock Lost and Found. Then we take a solemn moment, as in this game at the top of the map there is a rather upsetting and familiar grave, that of dear rice lover Uncle Ben. We stand there for a moment and ponder, also unlocking with great power. Now you may be thinking that that's the end of the trophies for a little bit, well wrong as we still have a couple to go. The next was for equipping 5 of the different suits that you can unlock, since this is the ultimate edition any of the the DLC ones do count, and when we change into our fifth outfit, we unlock Snappy Dresser. After that, for just being an incredible swinger, which is not the best way I could have probably phrased that, but for completing a level 1 traversal benchmark and traversing across the city rooftops, we unlock both King of Swing and Wing It. Two more things to do before we get back to the campaign. The next is for the surveillance towers, of course, as when we activate the final one, we unlock the entire city and the trophy Amazing Coverage. And whilst I was at it, I also thought it best to get the rest of the backpacks as well. They they are quite a treat to collect actually, as they all have fun little easter eggs in them, and we also do need the points that they bring. And when we get to the last backpack containing a calculator, we also unlock Backpacker. 
Well, not a bad start, even if I do say so myself. However, time to get back to the story. Now, over the last couple of battles, our suit has been damaged. So since Doc Ock has left the lab for the night, we go in for some late night spider suiting. Only problem, the Doc returns and sees the suit. However, the stupid, baldy bastard thinks that we're Spider-Man's official tailor, which, sorry, yeah, that probably works. And Doc says his secret is also safe with us. He even gives us some notes on some designs that he thinks would work, bless him. Now, when I say I was going to carry on with the campaign, that was a small lie, as we have another miscellaneous trophy next. Now, when Spider-Man gets bored of swinging, he can walk throughout the streets. When you do this, people will occasionally walk up to you for a high five, a picture, or even to tell you about a crime. The next achievement simply has us interact with 10 people. It does take a little bit longer than you might think, but it is easy enough to do, and once done, we unlock Spider-Man about town. Now, back to the story proper. We arrive at Fisk's construction site, and it appears that the people are exactly building here, but since there's a lot more of them than we normally handle, we need an upgrade. The upgrade that we get is a new impact web type, which allows us to completely cover somebody in webs instead of lighting them up one at a time. But by unlocking this and upgrading it once, you guessed it, we have our next trophy, the scientific method. Now, these webs are honestly one of my favourites in the game as they can be great with stealth and they're just fun. With them, we're also able to take out wave upon wave of Fisk's angry men. Well, not just the new webs, we also do kick quite a bit of arse manually, so that too. Now, this turns out to be an introduction to a new type of event, Fisk Hideouts. Throughout the game, Fisk and some other hideous types will be introduced to eventually appear with their bases, and we have to get rid of the nasty pasty bastard henchmen from within. Simple enough, but they can take some time and patience. During this fight as well, folks, you will not believe it, we have another trophy, as when we complete our first level 1 combat benchmark, we unlock and stay down. After that's done, Doc then rings back to saying things should go back to normal as he is talking his way out of the earlier incident, but bright things are apparently on the horizon here, so let's celebrate with another trophy. As next, we get an upgrade which allows us to do tricks whilst falling in the sky, and for performing four tricks in a single fall, we unlock Sticky and Tricky. Next was to visit Aunt May at Feast's shelter and help with her surprise party. We distract our loving aunt whilst the owner of Feast, Martin Lee, brings the crew in, and more importantly, the cake in. Aunt May has been volunteering here for five years helping the people of New York, so we celebrate and eat. Not for long though, however, as we're then told something's going on with Fisk's estate sale. God, that's tough to say. So we need to head there and make sure that there isn't any trouble. <laughs> Fat chance. Once there, we slither our way inside and do indeed see something amiss, as men with demon masks are bullying somebody about a file. But there is something else here that doesn't belong. A ginger. Nah, it's MJ of course. What Spider-Man story could exist without the friendly bat-swinging Mary Jane? She is here for a scoop to use for the Daily Bugle where she works, and she explains what's happened leading up to the masked villain's entry. About 20 minutes beforehand, Mary walks in saying that she was here to take some pictures for the newspaper. She in fact lied about it all as she would much rather ask the person some pretty intense questions about Fisk, but when we're not busy blinding her that is. The tall person walks away to take a call, and we see a statue through a crack in the door that Fisk shouldn't have. So when the other woman is distracted, we sneak our way in for a closer look. Now, it's no secret to those of you that have played the game or seen this, but the Mary Jane sections are certainly the weakest point of the game. They just kind of slow the game down a little bit too much, and I, I don't know, I just didn't really care for them. Nobody plays a Spider-Man game to play as Mary Jane. However, they're not the longest pieces in the world, so we make do. We eventually find the statue and realise that if we twist it up a little bit and give it a fancy stick, it unlocks revealing a file. And this is the file that the demons are here to collect. We cut back to the present and hear about something called Devil's breath. But we can talk to MJ about this later, we have to kick some ass first. Well, not after a real awkward goodbye, as MJ is actually our ex, and things are slightly tense. Anyway, spider kicking time. The demon villains of course look cool, but they are no match for us, and we soon string them up and take care of the rest, also destroying pretty much all of the thousand year old antiques in the process. <laughs> whoops. With everything safe, we take one of the masks with us so that we can study where it came from and hopefully find an origin of this gang. So when Mary Jane goes to leave, we we then decide to meet up for some good old fashioned friend fries. We talk about our job and our work with Doc Ock and well everything that you can imagine, before some sirens beckon us away and reveal the greatest cameo in any game ever. Love seeing you two together again. You always were my favourites. God 
damn it, I miss you, Stanley. Marvel just really isn't the same without you. Great job, Insomniac, for that. We needed that. However, after that, we are once again swinging from the rooftops. And after another old friend of ours, Shocker. He has escaped and is currently storming his way through the streets, killing innocent people and causing millions of dollars of damages. But honestly, I couldn't give a toss, as we have some much smaller crimes to stop first. The next was for stopping two criminal joyriders, and by stopping them, we unlock our next trophy. As during the chase, we perform our 10th perfect dodge, and by doing so, unlock Spider Sensible. We are then told again that Shocker needs stopping now before this gets any worse, but we're like, eh, interesting. However, there's a base here with some small level henchmen, and I'd much rather beat the stuffing out of them first, so, you know, to warm up. Now, during these bases, you'll be given a couple of challenges that you have to complete, and by completing them, you'll unlock some extra tokens, so they're always worth going for. And for doing both of the extra tasks whilst mulching these guys into the floor and completing the base, we unlock Ace the Base. Yuri then talks to us again, crying over the phone, saying that Shocker is still killing so many people and just begging, crying, snotting, saying that she needs our help now. But honestly, I think this is the perfect time to take some of the most average photos of buildings you've ever seen, as another type of collectible is for taking pictures of Easter eggs and buildings around New York, and I am a sucker for a fully filled photo album. So we went around the entire city taking pictures of all of the landmarks, it honestly didn't take too long, and once done, we unlocked sightseeing. Alright, fine, you don't need to go on, we'll go stop Shocker now, Jesus. When we arrive, Herman has just stolen money from a bank and is trying to bounce his way to freedom, and we have some light banter along the way. We tackle him to the floor, but since he is not in the mood for talking, he just bounces off again and we follow suit. With the police watching his every move, we ask why he is stealing again, and he says that he can't say a thing about it. Fine with us. So we just tackle him to the floor again, and with that, Shocker is officially defused. He is once again arrested, and Yuri says, Tam it, very much. But with that done, it's time to take the demon mask that we took to Martin Lee, as he has got an art and history degree and may know more about his origins. On the way, you're honestly going to be taken aback here, folks, as well. We've got another trophy. Now, in between every mission, if a small crime comes up, I immediately tackled it, as getting them out of the way with now will make the grind at the end of the game much easier for me. However, one of the tasks that you repeat a lot during these is stopping cars. And here lies our next trophy, as when we stop our 10th car altogether, we unlock the next overdrive. After that, we then took the Master Martin, and he is happy to give his thoughts. It's a replica of a Chinese opera mask, and the symbol inside means demon. Martin says that the mask could be connected to very dangerous people, and that him and MJ should tread very carefully. How ominous! Anyway, with that done, we carry on. Back at Otto's lab, once again, he's making wonderful progress trying to make prosthetics for people in need. However, time for something to go wrong again, as Mayor Osborne decides to enter and shut down the entire site, calling it a safety hazard. Norman knows Peter as well, since we're best friends with his son Harry, who we haven't seen in a while, but Otto also knows that this isn't about safety as Norman Osborne is just another corrupt politician. Typical. However, with that, Otto asks for some time alone to figure things out. This is when we're then introduced to Harry Osborne's research stations, another task to complete throughout the game. Each station helps the world or people in some way, and with every station, we need to complete a small task to keep them up and running. Now, honestly, these are my least favourite thing to do. They take a lot longer than you think they'd need to, and there's quite a couple of them to finish. So we're going to tackle most of these later in the grind. The first we do has us go through some toxic clouds and photo the smoke stack responsible. You know, nothing too spectacular. However, after helping nature, it's time for some action. Shocker has escaped again as the guard freeing him apparently was under my control and his eyes were glowing white. Which is odd, but sod it, why not? It's a Spider-Man universe. Anyway, we've stopped Shocker once, it's time to do it again. Now, the fight gets off to an interesting start as Shocker's equipment has had a rather considerably beefy upgrade. However, he must go down all the same. Now, honestly, this this fight is really fun. Shocker, of course, uses, um, uh, oh, oh what's the bloody word? Oh, yeah, shocks. Well, more shock waves, but you get the point. But we find out mid-fight that he has to do this. Somebody is making him, and if he doesn't, he won't last very long, to say the least. All he knows is that they all wear really weird masks. And however much we can sympathise with somebody being coerced to do something, we do have to kick him in the jaw all the same. So we do. Eventually, we do beat him as he drops the entire roof on his head like a pillock. But once again, Shocker is down only this time we unlock the trophy shock and awe. And now it's pretty obvious that the demons are rapidly becoming a big player in New York crime. So for the time being, I thought it best to deal with some of the smaller crimes and to get a couple more of the miscellaneous trophies under our belt as well. So away we go to help the people in need, and thankfully the trophies weren't too far behind. The next we unlocked was completing all the faction crimes in a single district, easy to do if you keep on top of them, and for that we unlocked Neighbourhood Watch. We then take on a group of demons who have caused a rather nasty crash. We enter the scene by super stealthily kicking somebody in the entire head, and with that we get our 75th silent
silent takedown and unlock the next trophy, Arachnophobia. But I think that's a good place to leave it for now. We'll get back to the side issue soon, but for now we need to check Fisk's warehouse on the docks as we believe something is happening there. And it's right, demons are after Fisk's vault. We quickly dispose of the men around the base when we do, the boys in blue arrive. Well, the singular boy in blue. This is Jeff Davies, and if you don't know that name now, you will soon. But we team up with this fellow hero to suss out what Fisk has here. It takes a little bit of detective work and we use our new electric webs to find a hidden basement, but we are too late. The demons have already raided the entire supply in the basement, and since that's a problem for the people of this good city, we go to stop one of the trucks. The start goes well, however, when a petrol tanker crashes into us, things take a turn for the worst. We pull the tanker up from the train tracks before a train smushes it, but with a lorry speeding towards us, it looks like this might be the end of Spider-Man. Well, it would be if Officer Davis didn't T-bone the lorry straight out of the way, completely saving us. They should give this guy a medal or something, phenomenal police work. Honestly, it's tough being Spider-Man, we haven't even had a chance for a nap, and the day just keeps on getting better as in true Spider-Man style we have been evicted, so we need to find a place to crash for the night. As we go look for a web to rest our head, we get a call from an old friend who tells us to go to a certain rooftop and just have a look around. This is Black Cat, an old flame of Peter's that seems to be back in action. Now, her return is an odd one, as around the map there are now cameras, and through those we can find her little cat plushy things, and of course we need to get them all. And by getting our first, we unlock the achievement cats out of the bag, so we decide to carry on with them all straight away and waste no time. Now, on the way, I decide to go for another trophy though. Now, I don't know why you would, but eventually you can unlock fast travel, and for this trophy, we just need to use a subway five times. Easy enough to do, whilst on the prowl for cats, we use the trains and eventually unlock Born to Ride. But it really proves how well they got the movement down with this game if using fast travel just isn't necessary. Love that. But eventually, we find all of our cat toy things and even get a location for where Black Cat must be, so we go and check it out immediately. Inside is many, many stolen items as well. Well, that's Black Cat's deal, she's a burglar. But she also comes bearing gifts, as on the table for us is a brand new spider suit. We let go of our common sense and just take it. Now, we're not going to keep it on, however, by doing this Black Cat side quest, we unlock cat prints. Now, after a rough night, we decide to crash on Aunt May's sofa at feast for the time being. And in the morning when we wake up, Martin Lee comes in saying that he's heading out of town for the unforeseeable future and that May is now in charge of feast. And I'm sure he's not going to be doing anything negative towards humanity. However, we carry on. When we leave, we then find Pigeon Man. This side Side quest has us meet Howard, a racing pigeon breeder, and unfortunately, when he was kicked out of his house, they let all of his birds free. So once again, we have to get to work in pigeon hunting. Definitely not something I expected to be doing in a Spider-Man game, however, here we are. Speeding through the city chasing flying rats. However, there isn't that many, so we soon patrol the entire city and eventually find all of his feathered friends. By returning every single one, we then unlock Pigeon Hunter. Now, through Jeff's heroic behaviour, he is indeed getting a medal. Unfortunately, it is politically driven by Osborn, though. But it's still great that he's getting it. However, before we head to the ceremony, we have to fight Fisk's crew and the demons at the same time as they are battling for control of New York and things go very badly when trying to stop a helicopter. We web it to a control box or something, but it wasn't a good idea as it is now just given the helicopter its very own wrecking ball. We then stop a falling crane from taking out a couple of blocks of people and go to stop the chopper. It's tough with rockets and a wrecking ball, but once again to nobody's surprise, Spider-Man saves the day and puts the helicopter out for good. My god, this game is beautifully cinematic. Insomniac really knew what they were doing here. Wonderful. But when that's complete, we also meet a new character, Miles. Again, if you don't know the name, him, soon you will. But he's Jeff Davies' son, and the ceremony is about to begin. But not before another trophy, I'm afraid, as when we upgrade our gadgets 15 times altogether, we also unlock the trophy science for the win. Right, enough stalling. It's time for Davies to get his medal. After all, he is a superhero. Well, according to Miles and me anyway. But the start of the ceremony goes great. People are clapping, speeches are given, and I'm sure nothing will go wrong here at all. Things immediately go wrong here. Osborn gets a call saying that somebody has been waiting for this moment for years and they're gonna put him down. And I reckon the threats are fairly serious as Peter's tingles goes off and certain people around the ceremony start glowing with explosive reasoning. Jeff gets caught in a blast and so does Peter and MJ. For the first time, Peter is down for the count as explosions continue to, well, well, e explode. We now play as Miles as we have to go and find our mum and dad. We find our mum first under some rubble a couple of meters away and we free her before going back 
back to find our dad. Unfortunately, the path is littered with demon scum killing everybody they come across, so it does take some patience and cunning to make it through to the stage. In fact, we do get caught, but before the demon that finds us finishes the job, their boss tells them to leave. And the boss is Martin Lee? Whoa, never saw that coming. However, with that, the demons exit and so does, well, Miles' dad, as he exits from living to not. I actually don't know what I meant back, but well, he's dead, right? The damn dad's dead, as proven by his funeral. With the first act of the story complete, though, we also unlock the next trophy, Demons Emerge. With Spider-Man knowing that Martin Lee is behind the attack, it's time to find him, or at least find evidence that proves his involvement, as right now the police can't do anything. Apparently, Martin also has the power to corrupt people, bringing out the negative side of everybody in the name of terror. So on the path to Nailing Lee, we find a facility he owns that the demons are at. We take care of them all and head on inside to find plans and plotting alike. Truck bombs, weapons, guns, the full lot. However, when fighting more demons, a new group make their appearance, the Silver Squad. Or something, I don't know. But these guys don't know the meaning of law as they go to immediately execute everybody there. This is when we meet Silver Sable. She is the leader of the Sable group who are a private security force who are now working with Osborne in order to clean up the city. Promising, I'm sure. Totally not totalitarian. But with introductions made, we go to take our leave and find more evidence on Martin Lee. So, time to raid his office at Feast. When we're inside and after a couple of puzzles later, we find the incriminating room, one where we hear about Martin talking about his power growing and it feeds into his anger. But we also find the folder to the devil's breath again as they manage to take it back. So with the evidence, we take our leave and immediately bump into the man. We're not exactly subtle about our hatred for him either now, but we carry on. Later when we meet up with MJ again, we get a call saying that the demons are attacking Oscorp CFO. So we need to go and stop that rather quickly, I reckon. And away we go. Now, honestly, nothing too different happens. We beat our way through enemies until we make it to the room in question and save the poor civilian in need. Turns out that the demons were after financial records, as Osborne has been paying millions into Devil's Breath and keeping it a secret. But the doctor working on Devil's Breath, Isaac Delaney, might be the next target, and we need to know where he is. But I'm sure that doctor's danger and life can wait, as we have some more side tasks to worry about. First of all, Doc Ock has been in touch saying that he has had some new funding and is making miracles happen with every idea helping people getting braver and bolder. We also meet a new villain through special boxes. This mystery man wants to see how we operate to study us apparently, but with several tasks that need to be done, we get to work. First, we stop some bombs that have been planted around the city. Nothing too serious and it's over in minutes, but when it is, we unlock short fuse. But this is Taskmaster. He thrives off learning combat and can mimic any move by any person after watching it only once. He places four group of challenges around the city. Bomb, stealth, drone and combat. All of them are pretty easy and only take a minute or two to complete, but we need to do them all. And we get quite a couple of trophies for doing so. First, for completing every kind of task that he throws at us, we unlock Spy Hunter for completing a drone challenge, Fists of Fury for a combat challenge, and Ninja for a stealth challenge. But that's not all folks, as in one of the combat challenges, we then use a tripwire to make two enemies hug ten times, it's cute and adorable, and we unlock Hug It Out. And then, as you'd no doubt expect, when we complete every Taskmaster challenge, we then unlock Challenge Finder, as well as meeting the main man himself. Now, admittedly, he beats the absolute smeg out of us, as it takes a very particular approach to knocking him out, and we lose the first time, simple as. But knowing that we're not really strong enough to take him down right now, we decide to go elsewhere and face him later on when we're stronger. We find out that he's going to be attending a costume party dressed as one of our favourite villains. We eventually track the lizard, absolutely cutting up the dance floor, but before we can compliment him on his sick moves, bro, he gets taken away by the demons. We fight our way straight to him, and upon a good old eavesdrop session, we see Martin Lee become Mr. Negative properly for the first time, as he compels the Doctor to say which other Doctor was working on Dragon's Breath. When he gets compelled by Martin Lee, he then tells us the name of the Doctor is Morgan Michaels, and unfortunately still under Martin's control, he then shoots himself. We escape and take care of the killing demon scum before tracking down Martin. He decides that the party is just too kind and possesses a bunch of people to attack each other, and more annoyingly ourselves included, which gave Martin the perfect chance to escape. So we decide to raid Oscar corpse offices itself and to find out what this devil's breath actually is and the doctor working on it. And once we do, we find a computer perfectly open and ready for our snooping.
something. We find out that Devil's Breath isn't actually a biological weapon. It was initially designed as a cure for genetic disorders, but its current state does pretty much the opposite of that. Hence why the demons want it. It could kill millions. However, with a potentially deadly weapon in the hands of criminals, we decide it's the perfect time to do some side missions and small crimes, of course. Now, over the last couple of hours, we've been doing some side missions revolving around Tombstone trying to make a name for himself. It's not important to the story, hence why I haven't mentioned it yet. However, it's time for the conclusion to this side story, as it's time to take Tombstone down. Now, for a touch of context, Tombstone has a disease that makes his skin invincible to everything. He's pretty much immortal. However, throughout the story, we have actually found a cure that could even the playing field and make him much more mulchable. So we find Tombstone as he's working and commence the beating. The beating goes the same as the fights that came before it, but honestly, I love Tombstone in this. He's played with a sort of respect for Spider-Man, and I, I don't know, I really don't hate him. I think he's great. But we would prefer him human, so we give him a nice deep breath of our disease-fixing juice, and it's shown to work perfectly when a saw then cuts Tombstone. Time to finish this. We throw around maybe 20 motorbikes straight into his jaw, and miraculously, that works. With the final kick, Tombstone is down for the count, and we unlock the next trophy, Tombstone Takedown. Back to the story. We go to meet MJ at the park, but when we arrive, it turns out that it's been turned into a Sable camp, and inside is the CFO of Oscorp that we saved earlier. In fact, MJ wasted no time in breaking into the camp to get to him. The CFO says that they're moving Dr. Michaels tomorrow afternoon, and since he has the one and only virus on him handcuffed to him at all times, something's probably going to go down. But we do have a touch more side missions first, I'm afraid, and I will say that this video is a little bit all over the place due to the order I did everything in, but hopefully I'm making it easy enough to follow and understand. So yeah, I hope you're understanding. Back to the side stuff. Another one of the side missions have us find school students that have or are in progress of being possessed by the demons. We then of course have to stop them from committing crime. They are simple enough to go through, but there are about five or six of them. Now again, the reason I mention this is that when we stop the last horde of possessed idiots from tearing the city apart, we complete every single one and unlock the next trophy, Schooled. Now another slight side mission is a set of two puzzles that you can find in Doc Ock's lab. They are again very simple in premise, but finding the right path or the match can get quite tricky towards the end. However, we switched on a further 2% of our brain capacity and got to work, one by one ticking them all off down the list. And roughly an hour later, we completed the last Doc Ock puzzle and unlocked a bit of a fixer-upper. Now, since we were making great progress on side missions, I thought, screw it, let's just finish them all and then we're done. So we carried on spider manning as best as we could. The last mission, again, was a simple one. We just had to protect police and defend a station from Fisk's goons trying to steal evidence. It was over in about maybe 20 minutes and with every single side mission in the game completed, we unlocked the next trophy, Friendly Neighbourhood Spider-Man. So with them all finally out of the way, time to crack on with the story. Time to protect the Doctor, even though Yuri says we shouldn't, as Silver Sable said that she'll probably shoot me too. But that doesn't stop us. We see Michaels and the Devil's Breath hop into a car, and literally 0.04 seconds later, Martin Lee arrives in a tank truck of sorts, and takes the Doctor for himself. We chase and fight upon the truck in an admittedly amazing sequence, and it ends with us bringing down the truck solo like an absolute champion. When we eventually wake up after the crash, Martin is gone and he's also taken the devil's breath. However, Dr. Michaels thankfully is okay, if not a little bit worried that a bioweapon has been nicked. Silver Sable also gives us a little bit of a bollocking, but we move on. Now we have another sequence with MJ. We arrive at Grand Central Station as she has heard that the demons want something here, and she is bob on with that theory as Martin Lee immediately pulls a full panto moment and appears behind her. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I, I don't know. Anyway, things quickly go to Smeg and it turns out that they are here for a dispersal device that will give the dragon's breath the air that it needs. Well, time to Spider-Man it. As MJ, we tell Spider-Man to grab and take out demons on their own, and when enough of them have been spider-napped, Peter then instructs MJ on how to defuse the bomb which Martin has already started. We somehow manage to disarm this high military-grade bomb first try as a reporter and save the hostages, and most importantly, Oscorp gets Devil's Breath back. It's finally time though, folks, as we have a train to catch with Martin Lee. His anger and his power are only growing, so we need to bring him down fast. Next, we have a fun little train sequence of having to dodge his attacks and inch closer to maiming distance. And once we do, that's enough. We push him into the controls, breaking them and him. However, without controls to the train, we have to pull a true Spider-Man 2 moment. No brakes, no problem. Ah, 
totally worked last time. Uh, well, I guess not. Well, option two is to just simply crash the train above ground, which works perfectly. And with that, Martin Lee is arrested. And that's one more goon that we don't have to worry about, as I'm sure we won't be seeing him anytime soon. We're then called to Doc Ock's office again, as apparently he's done it. The breakthrough has happened. And yeah, it's pretty impressive as he then shows off the incredible pair of new arms. Oh, no, sorry. I meant pair of pair of arms. Wait, no. Yeah, no, that's right. Now, however happy he is with the breakthrough, the testing pulls up some errors that could apparently really affect his brain, since the device used to control the arms is connected directly into Doc Ock's head muscle. And since Doc's got a disease that will eventually paralyze him, he needs those arms sooner rather than later. We tell him that he needs to step away and fix the issues before it permanently damages him, and the Doc agrees. Until we leave, that is, and he turns it back on and takes out his Osborne frustration out on a TV, threatening him. Yeah, this is going to end well. However, this is the moment where the shit hits the fan. The convoy taking Devil's breath back has been raided and looted, and the raft is currently being attacked. Somebody is trying to free every single villain that we have ever put away. It starts with Electro escaping, and then his electric powers and his new suit allow him to indeed free everybody else. You've got Rhino, Scorpion, Martin Lee gets out again, and the Vulture. And when we chase him to the rooftop, one of the greatest scenes in gaming plays in which every member of the Sinister Six turns up and beat us to a pulp. Wait, hang on, if it's the Sinister Six, why are there only five of them? Of course, of course, Dr. Octagonopus is the ringleader and the one behind all of this. He designed everybody's new suits, is the one for breaking them out of prison. He's responsible for it all. He warns us to stay away and then disregards us like some used tissue. We're then found floating in the water and we unlock our next trophy, the Six Assemble. Now Doc Ock has been outed, he takes to the streets of New York and manually releases the Devil's Breath for all to breathe in and enjoy. The disease immediately becomes a pandemic. Sable becomes in charge and forces checkpoints and camps all over the the city, Osborne declares Spider-Man the criminal and blames him for the outbreaks and the crime, and the disease is infecting people at an incredible rate. Things are just going wrong folks. So with 19 broken bones, we get back on our feet and get ready to save the day once again, even though everyone will more or less attack us on sight now. So it's time to defeat the Sinister Six, save the city, find the cure for Devil's Breath, and just be the most amazing spider that we can be, with the help of MJ and Miles of course. First step, time to shut down Electro and Vulture who have formed a rather unlikely friendship. Now the fight between them both is definitely fun, but it is rather straightforward taking them down. You just dodge all of their attacks and hit them when they're open. It's pretty standard stuff, so eventually Vulture takes a dive and Electro gets sparked out, also unlocking the next trophy, Grounded. Now with this boss defeating confidence and some upgrades to the suit, I thought it was the perfect time to take on Taskmaster again. This time it goes much better, as we just hell shit at him and knee him in the jaw until he gives up. Well, Maw gets webbed to hell and then just disappears, but by mastering this task we also unlock Master of Masters. Now the next colossal two that we need to take care of are Rhino and the Scorpion. This is a much more fun fight in my opinion, as Rhino is an awesome character, and having to use the environment to stun him whilst also dodging Scorpion's long range attacks is just more of an intense and fun fight. However, similarly to last time, we do get the better of them. I mean, of course we do, come on. And when the bickering couple start to turn on themselves, we give them a wonderfully cramped cage to fight in, and just like that, two more of the big bads are down. And thanks to taking them both out, we of course get our next trophy as well, Sting and Smash. Only one more to deal with now before our final matchup with Doc Ock. It's time to take down Lee again, and we need to hurry as he's going for the cure to Dragon's Breath. And now with Aunt May picking up and very sick with it, speed is of the essence. Now MJ finds out which facility is keeping the cure as she breaks into Norman's penthouse for it. Also finding out that his son Harry didn't go on holiday but is instead hilariously ill with something. Oh, and she also found the entire reason why Martin Lee hates Osborne, as Martin was experimented on as a kid in regards to his powers, and because of them, he killed both of his parents. Now, that's a lot of information and discovery, so we break out of there and take a leaving present with us, another mutated spider. Anyway, now that we know where Martin Lee is going, we head straight there and even team up with Sable a touch to get into the building. Once inside, we see Martin get his hands on the cure, Dr. Michaels and Mayor Osborne himself. But before we can finish the job, we interrupt in the nick of time, and with this final attempt, we're gonna put him down for good. Again, again. So we hell every computer we can 
confined straight into his throat. And as we punch our way through an actual demon, we knock him out and cast the demon aside forever, also unlocking Stay Positive. But remember folks, we're Spider-Man, we can never have an easy win. As when Lee goes down, Doc Ock takes over, pushing us out of the way and standing on our head. Yeah, Doctor Octopus is just simply assembled in a much superior way to us right now. So we get knocked out and the Doc grabs the cure and prisoner in Osborne. We have bloody been through a lot already, but unfortunately, time isn't something that we have as Aunt May really isn't doing well. Fatally badly, actually. So we need the cure and we need it now. Oh, and remember that spider that MJ left with unknowingly? Well, it decided to go for a hike by itself and bite Miles on the hand. God, that must be nasty. I sure hope nothing bizarre happens to him. Anyway, with this, we hit the max level right before the final mission. So when we spend our last skill points and unlock the true potential of our power, we also unlock the next trophy, Superior Spider-Man. Now, it's time for the end game. To beat Otto, we know that we are going to need a new suit that can take on his eight limbs. And a badass suit is exactly what we create, with a dramatic concept design fashion show cinematic. But behold, and you look. As we leave, we see Otto climb to the top of Oscorp Tower with Osborn, and after toying with him for a minute or two, he lets him plummet to his death. Or he would if it wasn't for our impeccable timing. We go to face Doc Ock and beg him for the cure, but he's not having it, so we must put him down. Now, admittedly, this fight is a hell of a battle. Doc hits incredibly heavy and can dodge a lot, but by webbing him up and punching him repeatedly in the temple, we slowly start to damage his arms and get some momentum against him, as he doesn't know that he's dealing with the most devious bar in New York City. <laughs> However, mid-fight, it's time for a revelation, and I'm gonna let this one speak for itself. Such a disappointment. Parker. You knew? I tried to warn you, Peter, but you didn't listen. You knew? I won't let you win. This means too much to me! You, you motherfucker! <laughs> Alright, he doesn't call him a motherfucker. It's just a mod that I knew I had to include. God, that scene is amazing. Jesus Christ, Insomniac just knocked it out of the park with everything. Story, graphics, music, it's just all incredible. Anyway, back to the fight. Doc is weak and so are we, but we manage to continue to pelt three bags of shite out of him. He almost gets the better of us once again, but by quickly tapping his Xbox off button, Doc's arms fail him and he plummets into the building where he begs for our help, as that wasn't just him, that was the arms affecting his brain, and he can't go to prison because he'll be paralysed without them. Oh well, sod off. We've got the cure, but as you would expect, there's another problem. This is the one and only cure, and they need to use the original to replicate it so that it can save everybody in the city. However, the process will take a day. The problem is, Aunt May doesn't have a day. She's got an hour at the most. So for the sake of the entire city, we cannot give the cure to Aunt May. And honestly, this next part is just absolutely gut-wrenching. You're gonna be okay, ma'am. I've got the cure right here. Take off your mask. I want to see my nephew. You knew? I've known for a while. I never wanted you to worry. I did. And I am so proud of you. And Ben would be too. All the people you've saved. I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. <laughs> with that, Aunt May is no more, but the city is safe. The game ends with MJ and Peter sharing a disgustingly public snog. Oh wait, this is Marvel. There's got to be like an after credits. Oh, there is! As Miles then shows off some rather odd things happening to him since the bite. That's right, there are now plural Spider-Men. Let's go. Oh wait, another after credit scene as well? Nice! This one shows Osborne opening a tank, saying that he will find the cure to his son, with Harry, who is in said tank, being covered in what looks to be like weird black goo. 
Weird. Anyway, with that over, we unlock the next trophy, end game. And folks, you'll be happy to know that there's only a touch of cleanup to go before we end the platinum. Now, honestly, folks, there isn't really much to say here, as it's just the basics left with small crimes and gang hideouts and stuff like that. So, firstly, we took down every single Sable outpost around New York, which honestly didn't take too long to do at all, and by doing it, we unlocked mercenary tactics. After that was all of the research stations of Harry's that I mentioned earlier. Definitely my least favourite task, as I said, but we cracked on and eventually completed completed the last one, unlocking R&D, and the next three were for taking down every prisoner camp for back in the slammer, every Fisk hideout for all the king's men, and in a sanctuary for all of the demon bases. Definitely a lot to go through, but worth it in the end, as with that we get the 100% completion in every district, and unlock I Heart Manhattan, which felt fantastic as with one very simple trophy left, the platinum is ours. Our last task is simply to buy every suit, and since we already had 100% in everything, that was instant and wonderful, and with every suit purchased, we unlock a suit for all seasons. And most importantly, we then unlock the delicious platinum trophy, Be Greater. Wow, that was a lot more tense than I imagined, and since this is now the second time I've 100% completed this game, I think it's safe to say that for now, the grind is over. Now, honestly, I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Insomniac Spider-Man is the greatest superhero game as of yet. Now, I know that may be a little bit of a hot take with the Arkham games. Well, actually, no, that's pretty much it. There's only the Arkham games that could even come close to contending with this. But Spider-Man delivers on every single front. The story is amazing. The cinematics are like actual films. The soundtrack is wonderful. They've nailed the look and the personality of every character. Like, this game is genuinely perfect. And I cannot wait to see how Spider-Man 2 feels and handles. Because making that better than then this game is going to be no easy task. However, I'm actually quite confident that they can do it. So with that, let's just go straight to the stats. For Marvel's Spider-Man, it took us just over 25 hours to grind all 51 trophies in the game, including the Platinum. For my review, without sodding question, this game gets a perfect 10 out of 10. And honestly, like many others have said, this Spider-Man game is actually the perfect place to start if you're trying to get into achievement hunting, as it has a little bit of everything and it's not too tough, but still challenging in parts, which is why I'm also going to be giving this a 3.5 out of 10. Nothing inherently difficult about it as I just said, but time and patience will be needed a little bit. For the hardest trophy though, I think I'm going to be giving this to a suit for all seasons. As to unlock this, you pretty much need to do everything else in the game as well. Not really difficult, just time consuming. However, there we go. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more achievement grinds in the future, as of course we will be covering Miles Morales and Spider-Man 2 when that drops. Also need to give another massive thanks for my Patreon followers as well. I really appreciate you folks so much, and if you want to look at becoming a patron, yourself, feel free to check out the link in the description. And finally, don't forget to swing by my Twitch as well, where we go for the Achievement Grinds live. It would be lovely to have you, but I have gone on for far too long today, so thank you all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye for now.